In this video, I'm going to tell you about the quick and easy paint technique that I used on the Necrons in my Indominus box. So the day this video comes out is the day before the big honkin' new Indominus box, 9th edition for uh, Warhammer 40,000. Uh, it stores uh, tomorrow, if you are watching this on Friday. And uh, it, it's uh, a lot of people are looking forward to it. It's sold out. Then they had to make more of them and do like a make to order sort of situation. It's been crazy. It's probably sold more than any other starter that they've ever done before you know, at the beginning of the uh, of a new edition. And uh, there's great models inside there, and I've been enjoying painting the Necrons. I've been doing it on Twitch and uh, showing people kind of how I've been doing it as I go. And, uh, you know, Twitch is live. You can watch stuff, you know, from the past. But when people come in live, they ask frequently, like, well, so how are you doing this? How did you get that? That looks good. How did you do it? And so I figured rather than make a whole new video where I completely paint and explain all that stuff, I'll just explain how I did it and take a bunch of clips from my Twitch so that you can see the actual kind of blow by blow and maybe you can make your Necrons look the same as mine if that's, you know, what flips your trigger. Otherwise, you can use some of the techniques and then add your own little spice to it. Spicy. Step one, you should build your models. This seems, you know, obviously pretty uh, obvious. But yeah, definitely build the models. Take the time to go through and get rid of the mold lines and stuff like that. The technique will show mold lines a little more than some other techniques per se. So you want to definitely make sure that you scrape all those little mold lines. Clip everything, obviously, you know, they're push fit, but I would still probably put a little bit of glue in there. Maybe I'm just a, a little too nervous about things falling apart or getting loose over time, but I put a little bit of glue in mine. Step 1.5, I would tell you to texture your base before you do any priming or anything like that. Build your model, glue them to the base, put texture on the base. I don't care what kind of texture you used. I used my um, baking soda and super glue trick along with some kitty litter and some other stuff. Obviously a couple little plastic GW skulls here and there on some of the bigger guys. I made a video a long time ago about how to do this. Pachow. And I think it's important because it is, when you do it now, then you don't have to worry about doing it later. Number one, I see amazing looking or even pretty good looking paint jobs all the time online in different places, Reddit, Facebook, whatever, that they're like, yeah, I'm so happy with this. I and mean, the base is all still like, you know, you can tell it's not like they meant to keep it black because it's got schmutz on it and stuff like that. And then you could say a little comment and say, hey, what about the base? And they're like, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna do that later. I'm gonna do that later. Anyway, um, putting the texture down before you prime also helps because then when the primer goes on, it's just another layer of stuff to hold that texture down and keep it um, good on the base. I did a video about that as well. But ciao. So, you know, check those out. Step two, prime your models black. I don't care if you use a spray can. I don't care if you use an airbrush. I don't care what you use, but spray them good and black. Don't go on too crazy thick. Don't make them too powdery. But make sure you do get it pretty much everywhere. You want it to get in every last nook and cranny. The little ribs on the rib cages or whatever, all those little places up underneath, you want to get it everywhere because the black acts as your shadow in this particular paint job. The next step is going to be to kind of make the highlight, and this step is what makes the shadow. And if you miss some spots and leave gray plastic, it will really stand out later on, and it won't look good. So make sure to get that airbrush, rattle can, whatever you use into every nook and cranny, up underneath in the arms and what, just everywhere, get it everywhere. And again, light coats, you know, it, you've probably seen videos and, and things like that about priming, but just prime, prime it black, nice and smooth, couple of thin coats, but get it everywhere. Now this next step you could do with an airbrush, you could do a rattle can. I, however, used a big fat makeup brush. I did a video quite some time ago about why you should dry brush with big fat makeup brushes because they're friggin' awesome, but ciao. And they really, really shine in this particular use. Big, huge makeup brush. I'm using Army Painter Plate Mail Metal, which is not too bright of a silver, but not too dark, like a darker kind of gun metal. And just brushing back and forth. Predominantly, honestly, it's more of a coming from the top down 
But what that's doing is it's hitting all the places that the light would hit, the top of the, you know, Necron skull thing and the shoulder pad or shoulder blades, not pads. I don't think they're wearing shoulder pads. But it doesn't get in between like the rib cage, you know, and all that stuff. And it doesn't get into all these other places that we made sure to prime black in the previous step. And it just makes this great kind of silver and then black. Uh, it makes it kind of fade because it's brighter on the top parts that are easier for the brush to get at and it fades down in the places that the brush is having a hard time getting at. Once you're done with that, you can then go in with a smaller makeup brush instead of the big honking makeup brush if you want to catch certain areas or maybe just give a little bit more love of this that particular silver to certain spots. But don't overdo it. Don't catch every surface. You want to have some shadows, especially those warriors that are holding the guns in front of them, they should have some definite darkness down by their tummies. And that's just what makes it look right. So that's the trick to catching that black and then turning the silver and then just making it look like a blend and mm, makeup brushes. Now you could just go with that silver and black combo. That's a classic Necron combo, certainly. Maybe throw some wash in there, something like that. You could go that direction. I wanted mine to look a little bit more like the ones that they showed off when they first announced the box and have this sort of kind of almost a little bronzy look, but not too bronze. You know what I'm talking about. What I did was I used Skeleton Horde from, a, well, it's a contrast paint from Games Workshop, and it is designed to kind of be transparent, but do some stuff and everything like that. And when it goes over the metal, it just keeps those fades that I was talking about in the last step where you have that bright silver or medium silver down to black. It doesn't get rid of those. It just kind of accentuates them, but still makes them that same sort of color. And because very frequently contrast colors don't work so great and, and they don't act very smooth on big flat areas, that works to your advantage here with these Necrons because they do have some flat areas and then it makes them look a little corroded because it's sort of splotchy. And you can actually accentuate that a little bit with the brush and do that. And then you get a nice kind of a little bit sort of grungy, corroded, sort of kind of bronzy look to all of the meat parts on your uh, Necrons. Now, when I say the meat parts, on their arms and legs, there's the the bone parts, and those parts I'd kept silver. But then the parts like on their forearms and their and their and their, and their, their upper arms and on their thighs, there are parts that are thicker and don't look like bone per se. And those parts are the parts that I painted with the contrast paint. Some of the warriors specifically were missing meat parts in certain areas. Like one guy, his entire leg is just all like no meat. So that leg I didn't paint, and the other leg has got some meat on it and so I, you know but you don't have to go that way I did it that way to make the bone part of the necrons and the non-bone part of the necrons they're all made out of metal so it's it, anyway it, it makes them look a little bit different and it gives that kind of variation and makes them pop a little bit more but what about the non-meat parts you ask uh, Uncle Adam like the skull and the torso and the shoulder blades and all that jazz not the shoulder pads um, again then I'll go through and put some skeleton horde contrast on all of those parts as well and again especially with the shoulder blades there are big kind of flat swoopy areas getting in there and sort of swooping it around and getting it kind of messy makes it look sort of mottled and beat up which just adds to the look of the Necrons the new Necron sculpts and Indominus are sculpted to look beat up and old, um, almost a little undead zombie-like. They got parts hanging off here and there, and there's just like a little bit of stuff going on. And so to accentuate that, having that contrast paint be sort of modeled in some of those surfaces just makes it uh, look like a little bit older, grungier, um, corroded, and it's also really easy to do. Now, during the phase with the big fat makeup brush that I love so much, you will have gotten uh, silver onto the big uh, hyperphase blades that your score pack guys carry if you're you know painting the score pack guys which you should because i think they're very cool um and you, you it's okay it's fine you got silver on them so what you want to do in this situation is for the preceding or the the steps that come after this one you're going to want to go in with a brush and some black paint and paint those blades back to black again so it's okay that you got extra paint in other places like on those big sword blade hyperphase whatever the heck they're called but now you want to cover that back up and turn it back into black. Once you've done that, it is now time to, if you're me, bring out the airbrush and some white ink and try to kind of shoot along the edges 
the leading edge of the blades to get this kind of black and white fade. You could also try it with makeup brushes because they can make a smooth enough in many situations kind of uh, transition that you could make this work. But what you're trying to do is from the very edge of the blade go from nearly white and then fade to almost black at the back of the blade. So you've got this kind of black and white blade, which is a pretty cool look in and of itself. But then after you get that part done, whether you use airbrush or whether you use makeup brush or whatever, maybe you're going to wet blend it. If you're really like a pro, that's a really cool idea too. Then again, if you're me, you take the airbrush and you take some warp lightning contrast, which is a bright green. And you actually put that through the airbrush. When you fire contrast paint through your airbrush, it becomes something called a filter or like a filter. And it just becomes like a transparent gel color that just goes over everything, but you still get the black and white sort of fade. But now instead of having a black to white blade or white to black, depending on which end you start from, you now have a green to black blade, which is a very interesting look. Then next thing you do after that's all dried and everything, of course, is you pull out your makeup brushes again. And now you go in and you start doing some kind of like fading along the, again, the edge of the blade and kind of fading it back. And I started with a pro acryl color called bright yellow green. And then after I did that, then I did another pro acryl color called golden yellow. And then after that, just along the edge of the blade, I edge highlighted, which I rarely ever do, but it works pretty well along blade edges like this. And I used another pro acryl color called ivory to just give it almost a white, but not quite white right along the edge of the blade. You don't have to do the entire edge of the blade. You can kind of start and stop, but it gives it a really interesting look that makes that blade look otherworldly, which if you're Necrons, it should. If you want your models to look a little rustier and kind of grungier than, than even where we're at right now, you take another contrast color if you want to, and it's called Griff Hound Orange and you just sort of model it onto the surface. And what I mean is you take a fine brush and you sort of poke it. You get some of that, that orange contrast on there and you just find some spots and you just poke it a little bit, maybe wiggle it around a little bit. And that will give it on top of that kind of bronze color, a little bit of a almost rusty sort of orange color, but it won't be opaque because the generally for the most part, most of the, um, the, the contrast colors aren't opaque. So it works pretty well that way. And you just do it here and there, again, sparingly, just to make sure that you get the look that you want. And then, um, you know, that you can then just maybe even throw a little bit of dark wash, like a, I don't know, like a Nuln Oil or an Agrax Earthshade in some spots if you want it to look even a little grungier, maybe like there's some oil coming out or something cool like that. Another contrast color, I like to take Black Templar and put it on some of the... Um, the like joints just to make them real, real dark again so that they kind of stand out from the, again, more meat parts, like I said, uh, on, uh, and I'm talking about generally more on the score pack guys, as opposed to the warriors that I did. The warriors can use it as well here and there, but it, the score pack, uh, destroyers specifically have kind of big, uh, on their, their th those three legs that they walk around, they have pretty big, almost like, I don't know, knuckles. I don't think that's the right term, but you know, like the joints. And so I'm, I definitely added a little bit of black Templar in there, which is a pretty opaque, but not completely opaque contrast color. And then after that dried, I went back and added a little bit of silver into the middle parts to again, bring up a little bit of contrast. Then the last step is basically just to take a look at your model and, and kind of figure out like, where are some spots that it would get scraped up real bad, walking through buildings and knocking over brick walls and stuff like that or whatever. And then take a real short, scratchy kind of dry brush and uh, put some silver on there, maybe a brighter silver than the original silver that you did the big fat dry brush with, and just find some places and give it some sort of scrapes with that silver to really cause that area to pop a little bit more. Again, we're looking at trying to build up a little bit of contrast, and just doing that can basically make the model look a lot more weathered and, and sort of lived in. And again, all of these techniques have been really pretty simple. It's a lot of contrast colors over dry brushed silver over black, but it still comes together and looks really good in my opinion. That's why I did it that way. And I think they were, they turned out pretty, pretty good. And, um, they're quick. I probably, it took me a couple of uh, sessions to paint all the warriors on my Twitch channel. If I had not been talking to people in the chat and doing all that kind of stuff, I probably could have fired through those 10 warriors in probably three hours, maybe a little bit less. They're very quick that way, especially when you work on them in an assembly line style. Just keep going, you know, okay, we're doing meat on arms, meat on arms, meat on arms, meat on arms. You go through all, and then you go back, like now we're doing the meat on the legs or whatever. If you sit and work on one model at a time, it'll slow you way down. Work as you go across and uh, you'll learn that you can actually get things done a lot quicker when you work in an assembly line. 
So that's the magic pretty much. Those are the techniques that I used on the Necrons to make them look kind of like the way I did there in that sort of kind of corroded, bronzy, but not too bronze kind of a color where there's still a lot of metal coming through. Uh, and you've got those nice kind of variations from bright highlights, silver metallic, down to dark kind of grungy uh, corrosion and uh, all the scrapes and the rust and all that kind of stuff. It's all real simple. And when you work on a bunch of models at once and you work through the technique, you can get a whole bunch of them done quick. If you want to see more stuff like this, you know, uh, again, come by the Twitch channel and uh, and uh, we'll have some fun. And the next things I'm painting that I can think of off the top of my head are, I think, a bunch of Skaven for Warcry because I'm building a Skaven warband with a whole bunch of Plague Monks. And so, again, we're going to be 13 of those guys. Assembly line is going to be the order of the day.